volumetric efficiency. The subject that's caused me a lot of sleepless nights or nights that I couldn't sleep just trying to figure out how to improve or what to improve to exceed the displacement that we have and actually make more power and we'll talk about all the things that could help you achieve all that and also a video or a visual about the four stroke and how it functions just to give you a better idea and actually give you some more reasons to innovate and improve all the functions of the engine and so we would actually also calculate the volumetric efficiency of my own on the based on the dyna sheet so hey this might give you more speed over rival <laughs> First and foremost, thanks to Gil sensors and controls for letting us use their video because I asked permission and they actually replied and said, yes, that's pretty cool. And you know, for those guys into robotics, you know where to check and what to go. I haven't figured out how to build an Iron Man suit, but hey, I'll go to these guys. I know this is gonna be boring for some because they already know this, but when you think about it, I'll try to get you guys into my train of thoughts. Okay, so here, the induction stroke, right? It start, starts and then it's the compression stroke. The more you can put inside the, co the combustion chamber, the higher it's gonna be. Therefore, more power or bigger bang, you know? And then, of course, the spark and all that but here here is where it's going to get interesting as the compression pushes it down you know as the exhaust starts pulling before the exhaust valve opens if there's vacuum there due to scavenging it's going to pull all of the exhaust in the chamber really fast and way efficiently and that's the same thing with the intake if your intake pipe and intake manifold has been pushing good flow into the chamber or into the throat or the port, this is going to happen. It's going to fill up the induction or the chamber really good. So, hey, it's going to be more power. And that's the only way to ever get more induction, more than what the displacement was meant to get or suck in. That's how you increase your volumetric efficiency or at least one of them because the exhaust plays an equally important role. And when you think about it, we're not even talking about engine parts or types of camshaft because any camshaft will work well if the engine setup is efficient. And after showing you that animation, you can understand now why I'm very, very fond of a cold air intake, not because of the cold air or because it's cold, no, because of the length. The length helps tremendously. And I've got a dyno sheet way, way back. And here it is. Let me show you guys. Look, you can see even at the top end, there's massive gains, not just horsepower, but even torque. It carries longer. So, hey, let me show you guys. I did my own, you know, crude way of animation just to let you guys know what I'm trying to explain or trying to say. Visualize. Imagine this for a moment. Those are the columns of air. Of course, they're all connected, but just let's just say they're stacking one another like this, right? So if you think about it, just as the last column near the throttle, this one, as it before it goes in the throttle to in the intake manifold, there's another column behind it pushing it, right? So hey, it's gonna be good because it's stacking one another and it's gonna get inside the engine even better or even more than it's supposed to. And that's one of the steps of increasing volumetric efficiency. One of the steps, remember. So looking at this after seeing that intake diagram, imagine before the intake valve opens, it's gonna pack in more air. Therefore, it's gonna be more efficient. And the compression stroke is gonna get even higher or even better when you think about it. So hey, that's more power. 
and see we haven't even talked about what kind of camshafts and all that because even on a stock cam this definitely would help and that is why if you remember my d15 b7 on my first ever hatchback it ran 15 flat with no ram air just a cold air but then ultimately it went 14.8 with actual ram air and when you think about it that's a stock cam stock block i just ported the head in the intake manifold so volumetric efficiency is more important than anything else and you can click here for that video of my hatchback but we're gonna leave it on the description so that you guys can continue enjoying this video and absorbing all the information that i'm about to give and stick around till later because i might surprise you guys with calculation and i might calculate your engine for you now going back to this now can you imagine if that filter was replaced by a velocity stack this is gonna get even more better or you know a level better right and that is why when we ran a ram air i was surprised that at the top of third gear we were still running negative figures that is why we knew we could have improved it and you know as you run a cold air like this it gets the intake manifold or the plenum filled really well right hopefully now it makes sense why when i port the intake manifold i take into account every single thing from the intake pipe throttle and even the head what it needs and ultimately what the actual engine needs this is the only way you can improve efficiency which of course comes with horsepower improving efficiency just means increasing horsepower not in a negative way so hey hopefully this sequence now looks for you or looks to you as it looks to me or how i see it that's how i see it whenever i see this video that is why it keeps me up all night trying to figure out what to improve or what can be better even though it's already good enough hey we're humans we will always try to push the limits right now as the chamber was filled really well because the efficient intake now it's the compression stroke so of course when there's more in there's a stronger compression and then obviously the spark sequence there when it sparks because there's more in it that's gonna produce more power that is why it's important all of this is connected to one another and obviously as it pushes down because of the power now the exhaust and because you have or if you have an efficient exhaust that means before it opens it's already pulling vacuum therefore it's pulling all the spent gases this way the chamber is clean for the fresh intake charge and the more it's pulled the more induction it can push in now that we've seen the four stroke animation, we got to the exhaust cycle or the exhaust stroke. And remember this drawing that I made, right? So if the exhaust system is done pretty well inside properly, it's gonna do this. So exhaust length matters. So here, I remember I talked about this earlier on in the older videos. Once the last column is about to reach the muffler or it's by the muffler or entering the muffler like this before it even goes out it starts pulling the incoming exhaust that's coming from the head or the headers so it's gonna connect it like this it's gonna start pulling it and it's called scavenging so i hope that makes sense now if you get this exhaust system running properly sized well and of course the intake this doing its job even if you have a stock engine it's gonna perform even better than you expect it's like because 100 percent volume efficiency is actually what the maximum power it's supposed to make on its displacement and compression so if you go 105 volumetric efficiency that's crazy that's actually really really quite difficult and quite rare most of the time it's between 80 to 90 percent and going 91 percent is actually really excellent and you guys remember the k24 and the k28 type r 
that we they were disassembling well the k24 the owner has this a dc5 k28 type r and that's the reason why we're building his engine because the best volumetric efficiency is the goal that is why he got an extra k28 type bar so we can actually build it and squeeze every power so he went to the dyno just to see how it makes or what it made in stock form notice look stock muffler and it has a freaking air box so this is actually all stock and we wanted to see how it makes or what it makes this way like we talked about earlier we would know or he would know what to do it to increase efficiency as you can see it made 194.6 wheel horsepower and 147.44 wheel torque so that's not bad if you think about it it has a stock freaking air box crazy and the owner is still trying to innovate some ideas in order to increase more power. But of course, once we get done rebuilding his other K20 Type R, the reason why we said it's spoon style is because we're going to keep it as much as possible to stay stock. But the target, actually, are you ready for this? The wheel horsepower target when we're done is 225 to 230 wheel horsepower with a freaking airbox so it's gonna be really hard but hey the challenge is very much welcome so you can very much expect in the near future we will constantly have updates in the dyno or progress of this dc5 and of course the k20a engine that we're rebuilding to make even more and this is tuned by speedworks and speedworks to tell you guys or to let you guys know they've been in it or on it since 2003 and actually when i first rebuilt my first engine leo the tuner was already turbocharging his civic that's how far they are you know and when i was racing in clark if you guys remember the video in 2008 speedworks engineering already brought their ek hatch which was a white one that actually run 10 seconds it was already running tense back then and the reason why i know is because i was there there early morning tuning my car and they were actually test launching their car and when they got the 10 second time sleep that's when i know they were real because hey they just went home they probably reached the goal and now they're on it for the next pro progress or the next task to go faster and that's when you know these guys are proper tuners because data is very important. The reason why I remember this is because I learned a lot from observing them. And so if you've got a diesel that you want to drag race or even race, they're the guys to go to because I've seen them tune some diesel cars or trucks that just run crazy fast. And look, you can see the cover picture. That's a Lamborghini. So they know their stuff. Hit them up or check out their page for more good stuff. You know, it's going to be fun. And so as we talked about the importance of the intake pipe and even the whole exhaust system for volumetric efficiency, remember this dyno of the engine that Bong did, which I patterned my current engine right now. So I learned this formula back in a, in a certain forum back in the day. And of course, it's not that super accurate. But when you think about it, I've been using this for decades and it hasn't failed me because it gets you really, really close to the correct figure. So let's compute this. So it's 147 or 148 wheel horsepower and the peak power is around 74, right? And of course, the compression is 12.4 is to 1. So I'll calculate it with you guys. So let's go. Of course, the displacement is 1595 cc. So that's 97 cubic inch. And with that, we get 165.17. That's if it was 100% volumetric efficiency. Like perfect, you know. So, but we compare it. To this dyno that made 148 wheel horsepower that's 90 percent of the 165 so this comes out to be one uh to be 90 percent efficient uh, 90 percent volumetric efficiency does that make sense i mean 
Of course, we would want it to be 94 or 95, so it's better, but hey, it's not that easy. And the thing is, a lot of people locally will say, oh, just raise the compression so you can raise your volumetric efficiency. No, it does not work that way. If you raise the compression, that means the demand is supposed to be there. Like if the, the limit of the 100 VE is naturally higher. So let's compute it, okay, with the same volumetric efficiency. Okay, we switch it to my current compression. 13.2 is to 1. So with everything else the same, it's 175.8 if it was 100% volumetric efficient. So 175.8, right? But remember, we did it with 90% VE. So we get 158.2. So that's 90%. And this is why... I find it hard or I, I have a hard time estimating what it might make because this is 90%, right? So imagine if we suddenly get lucky and pull a 93% volumetric efficiency, that would be 163.49 wheel horsepower. That's a big jump, right? So it's kind of hard to estimate, but this is also why I'm dying to do the series of my engine. And of course, we'll go all the way to the dyno and do all the bunch of tests with the different intake manifold and whatnot. So hey, you guys know you would like that, right? And comment down below your displacement if you have dynode, that's a bit better. So it's your displacement, compression ratio, and where your peak power is, or at least the dyno sheet, show me. And then I'll compute the current volumetric efficiency and the supposed 100 VE for your engine setup. So hey guys, comment down below. It doesn't matter if it's a Honda, Mitsubishi, or Toyota, just displacement, RPM power, and compression ratio. And we'll get to you guys right let's go i know you guys would understand that i'd like to keep the formula or the calculations close to my heart but hey i'll make it up to you guys and just comment down below your displacement rpm and power and i'll calculate it with no problems and going back to the diagram earlier on the or of the four stroke cycle it's actually when you think about it it's supposed to be when it's actually perfectly degreed with the cams so let's go back to that but before that you can see that with the volumetric efficiency discussion how can someone say you need more compression that's why it's not working i mean yes that may work but there's a lot more to it than just that unless they're just after your money so beware of shops like that right okay now let's go back to the four stroke cycle all right granted that i said this is perfectly degreed so imagine if you advance the intake cam or retard it's doing something that's reacting because of the lack of intake or too much intake that's the same thing when it comes to the exhaust if you want if the engine wants it to open sooner or later because that's where it's making more power it's either there's something wrong or in inappropriate or not matching from the intake and the exhaust it cannot be just one it it matches with one another this is why they say the whole engine is one system because look it's all interconnected including the compression ratio but if you can't assemble properly you, there's nothing else to do right so once again i'd like to give a thanks to gill sensors and controls and you can click up here for their channel but of course we'll have the link in the description below this is such a good diagram that explains a lot or at least you know it's an easier thing to watch and understand the concept so now that you know a little bit more about volumetric efficiency and how to gain more power you gotta beware of shops that don't know this